Nina, I see you. Let me just get you in here. One second. All right, Nina, you're coming in. Coming in hot. There you are. I'm back. <laughs> She's back. So sorry about that. What a wow. What a pain. That um, was that was quite that was quite something. <laughs> that was a whirlwind. Well, oh, yeah. for those of you that that missed it earlier, we were trying to do the live, and Nina was in her beautiful studio, and the reception there just wasn't strong enough for us to have a clear reception. It kept freezing. So, um, thank you for running to your beautiful home and for setting up some pieces to show us today. But um, just a quick background. I'll make this brief. This is the Thinking of Art call series. It's something that I started in 2020. It was really to introduce uh, everybody to uh, creatives, whether they be artists, interior designers, gallerists, auction house um, uh, colleagues, or people that I've worked with in the industry for many years. And today we have episode 57 with Nina Temple. She's based in Carmel, California, and she's been involved in the arts her entire life. Um, we're going to get to see some of her beautiful work. You can also preview her work on artstager.shop, which is a new site that I set up recently, uh, really curated works that are um, at a lower price point of really uh, amazing emerging artists that some you may not have heard about, others you, you have heard about. So with that, Nina, I wanted to give you a chance to catch your breath <laughs> and to thank you for joining uh, the Thinking of Art Call series today and to talk a little bit about your story and how you got started. Yeah, so I grew up with two musicians as parents. And um, so it was a natural path for me to just kind of get into some form of creativity. And I mm -hmm. grew up with music. Um, and then I ended up in the visual arts. And when I, I first went into fine arts, then I ended up being a graphic and web designer for 26 years. And then I went back to the fine arts when I retired in 2015. And I haven't looked back. Amazing. Amazing. So what would you say uh, when you were growing up as a kid, was there something that triggered you so that you knew you, you really loved painting and, and cr visual creation of, of artwork? Well, actually, I wanted to be a set designer. And um, my, the, the university I went to didn't offer it as a major. And my dad was composer in residence at this university. So I got to go to, to the university for free as long as I kept a certain grade point. So I, I didn't have a choice but to go to this one place. And I, so I became a painting major. And okay. I've always, I've always loved anything visual. I respond to visual things. I, there's just something about, there's just something about the creativity and the intuitive part of it all that I love. Yeah. And, and you grew up, uh, or I guess did you live on the East coast and then move to the West coast? I have later? lived, I have lived in so many places. I lived in Canada for five years. I lived in Rome, Italy for three, for two years. I lived in Berlin for three years. I've lived in New Jersey. I've lived, every, I've lived in a lot of places. <laughs> well, and you've raised a family during the whole you know, process. So, I mean, just talking about how you juggled it all and kept it all you know, together is, some, is a whole other conversation. But um, talk about your study abroad program in Italy. Was that more of a pivotal moment for you? Oh, that was incredible. That was, um, it was four months long, and I studied in Cortona, which is in the Tuscan area. And it was through the University of Georgia. It was an extremely special program. You had to qualify for it. They only accepted at the time 32 undergraduates and they had 200 graduate students. Um, I was an undergraduate and it was amazing. We, we, our, our home base was Cortona and we would do these satellite trips, these, 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 uh, these road trips to all these different places throughout, throughout Italy and Sicily. And we learned about art history, painting. We studied with painters. I learned, I learned calligraphy. I mean, it was amazing. It was, it was pivotal. Well, and you studied, uh, you had master classes with what, Elaine de Cooney, yeah. uh, Haram Williams. So uh, you know, I can see little inspirations of your work with, with uh, you know, artists such as de Kooning. So who would you say are, are your major influences or artists that you really look up to? Probably, probably the people that worked a lot with um, very fluid or acrylics on big, large canvases like Frankenthaler and Paul Jenkins and I mean, I, I had mm -hmm. this love for veils of color. And mm -hmm. I, as a matter of fact, I collect a lot of glass. And I, I think it's for that reason. I, I love the translucent quality and I love yeah. color and I love the delicacy of it. And I, 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 I'm very much about form. I love form and shape. I, I'm not an expressionistic painter. I don't just 
put things down on canvas. And I mean, I'm really, I really get into the forms that I use. And, and yeah. one thing in my work that's very important is the white space because hardly any of my work touches the edges. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think that, um, you know, and looking at the titles of your work too, and I, you know, I want to spend time with talking about some of the pieces behind you, but if you're looking at her work on artstager.shop or, or on Nina's site, um, it's interesting to see the titles. So at what point do you name these pieces? Is it oh, after you finish? So or after. Is it during? <laughs> We're, I mean, I get, I get a drink with my husband. We say, okay, we got to name five tonight. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you got, so you collaborate with your husband? Yeah. And I mean, titles? honestly, honestly, every now and then a title will come to me like, like while I'm working on it. But for the most part, it's, it's an afterthought because I, I, and I don't like even putting labels I'd buy my paintings or my inks because I, I, I don't want people to read into them right away. I don't want them to see what that title means and try to read into that as a message because it's not. I mean, these are, okay. these are intuitive works and um, they have a spirit about them. And that spirit hopefully is what's captivating people, not that it looks like something. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, looking at the works, I mean, I think they're, they're so dreamy. I mean, there's some that I look at and I think uh, seahorse, it, you know, well, <laughs> I mean, I think of different, different animals or, you know, images from the ocean, yeah. you know, from diving or coral or whatever. So um, it, is there a common theme of what people kind of, as far as feedback say to you? Yeah, whenever they I, I get work, I, the, the, they the, the regular things that people say are, oh, it looks like you're studying, like you've been studying under a Petri dish or something in a Petri dish. Uh, something yeah. under a microscope. They look like sea animals. They look like figure. They're very figurative. Uh, the, the, yeah. I used to get I used to get comments like, "What are you on LSD?" Because it, they seem so <laughs> like just bizarre to people. But honestly, yeah. honestly, they're I just love bulbous shapes. I love organic shapes. I love I, I love the tiny to the big. You know, like I love yeah. that extreme. And I I don't know. I just. I repeat shapes a lot because I seem to subconsciously like these shapes. Yeah, I'm tr I'm looking at the pieces as you're talking behind. I'm trying to find them on the site to see what the titles Here, are. Here, I'll get a little closer um, to them for you. I don't yeah, know if that helps. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can find them. It's like a puzzle because they're, they're so, so amazing. So like this one I'm showing one. you is, is Mischief Maker. Okay, yeah. Um, and so, that, so what were you thinking? I mean, do you get into like, do you, I mean, do you listen to music? I mean, how yeah. do you get into the vibe? Yeah, of, and I listen you know, to, before I, you create these. Yeah, I totally, I totally put my earbuds on, lock my door. I don't want anyone in. I, I just, I hunker down for like three hours and I totally just get into it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. And so I listen to all kinds of music. I, I, I find that, I mean, I, okay, what, like, I, what I, do you like? I like serious music. I like, I also play the violin, so I love classical music. I love jazz. I love, I love pop. I love, I love, you know, I, I love alternative music. I, lo I love all different kinds of music. Me too. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite bands? Oh gosh. Now that you're not supposed to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love Coldplay. I'll say that. I love, I love Coldplay Cold too. I love Coldplay too. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm excited for more outdoor concerts. So, so like, um, what are the other ones that you have? So Mischief? Okay, and then this the, this is the newest one I've done. It's hard to, this is the, let's see, I'm in a little square. That's the newest one I've done, this purple one. It's, it's quite Beautiful. monochrome for me, and I have not titled it yet. Um, this literally was just, just completed like three weeks ago. And mm -hmm. then Mischief Maker, and then Divergent is the one right there. That's Divergent. Beautiful. Kind of icy blue. So, That's very new too. So, so talk about the process and how many different, and layers and the drying time and all of that. So for those that are, don't really understand, um, you know, how much time it takes you to create these. So I, so I start by taping my paper down and it stays taped down until it actually dries because it has to dry like a drum. Um, so they don't get like tons of bumps in it. I, and then mm -hmm. I, I actually compose with water first. Um, I put puddles of water on the paper and then I start, mm -hmm. I start to drop inks. And I use so many different kinds of inks that they react to each other. And that reaction is exactly what I'm looking for. So some of them literally push the other ink out of the way, like they push it to the, to the extremity of the puddle, or, or they might actually float on top and some sink to the bottom. And in that process, mm -hmm. I'm getting these great edge qualities. 
and these great yeah. sediments that float from the ink itself. And a mm -hmm. lot of it is unexpected surprises, but like, if you have to work fast with ink because it dries fast. So you yeah. have to really be on your toes and know like, okay, you know, you, you need to go with your intuition. Like what, where do I want this to go? What do I want to keep? And it's just as important what I don't do as, as what I do. Right. So you can't rush it. You can, you can rush it. But now at this point, you're, you've figured out the rhythm of how much time it takes to dry and, and how you need to maneuver the paper yeah. um, to create these. So how many would you say that you've created so far? Well, in the last two and a half years, I've done almost 200. It's amazing. Yeah, I, can, I do, of, I do four, five, four or five at a time I can, I can actually work on. And, and it takes me about three to four sessions per piece. And how do you know when you're when you're done? Ah, that's the hard part. <laughs> that's the tricky always, part. Well, they're never, never really done, but you know, at some point you have to walk away. Can so, I just say that that experience has a lot to do with that? Because for years yeah. I didn't know when to stop, and that that stopping is as important as when you produce. It's like it, you have to know also when to pull back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I want to uh, backtrack and talk about Berlin. And we talked about this yesterday when we were going over kind of ideas of what we would discuss and Berlin was so significant for you. And I'm curious to, you know, for you to share that and why it was, why Berlin was so special. Well, I was there for three years and I, I think artistically I was so young and I, and you know, maturity is a large part of being an artist mm -hmm. and I didn't mm -hmm. really have that on my side, but I somehow got recognized in one of the top 10 galleries right away, which set my path for three years. And, um, and also being an American over there, it put me in this category of an American artist in Berlin. And, yeah. this, and so at that time, that was a very in vogue thing to be. And, and I, it, I literally would have like five to seven shows a year. It was great. And I, and not, I mean, I didn't, have a, I didn't have a gallery. I was going, I was in galleries. And it was an amazing, amazing. time to just, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like I could experiment. I could I could just lose myself with, I could try anything I wanted to try. And it was, it was accepted and it worked Yeah, and it, and it was loved. Right. And were you always doing, were you doing the, the ink drawings and I, you know, the same process or were you yeah. doing a different process or? Kipton, I was doing almost the same process, except it was on photographic paper. So the, so, okay. the, so the chemicals in the paper would, would come out reacting. of the paper and rise, react yeah. with the ink. The only negative that I realized like 10 years later, 15 years later, is that the work faded. Mm -hmm. So now it's on archival paper. It'll last forever. It's behind archival glass. I mean, it's behind museum glass. It's on archival board. It's, it's I mean, the yeah. whole thing is totally protected to last. Yeah, talk about the paper. I think that's something that, that we don't really talk about. It's all always about the artists and the colors and the materials used to actually create the images. But talk about the paper. Yeah, so the paper's from France. It's, um, it's Arches watercolor paper, and, I, and it's all handmade. So it's, it has these wonderful deckled edges on it, which, which I really mm -hmm. love. It's, 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 so they're yeah, all mounted. Too. They're not matted. They're, they're all yeah, they're, because I want to show off those edges. Yeah, and if people want to you know, purchase these unframed, that's possible. Or also Nina uh, can help with you know, framing them really beautifully, which is, which is great. Um, let's move to talk about your design and into your design career and you know some of your your amazing projects that you've that you've worked on so um i i so like i said earlier i did it for 26 years i had a i had so the name of my company was nina temple design and i had one office in annapolis maryland and one in monterey which, which is where i started mm -hmm. and i worked nationally i worked i covered every industry you can think of every every industry every market um I mean, of every, everything you could possibly think of, agriculture, hospitality, tech, I mean, everything, uh, federal, mm -hmm. everything. So it was, it was, I was, I was fortunate because I, I kind of got to pick and choose the accounts that I wanted. It was really a nice position to be in. Um, yeah. And I, and I had a team of, of people that were with me eight to 15 years. Like I, I would keep people that long that worked with me. And I mm -hmm. created these teams individually based on what the client's needs were. So I didn't just use staff, like use a writer because she was on staff. And I, I actually would seek out individual people to create these teams, which made the, prog the, the products and the projects very unique to that mm -hmm. client, as opposed to just using what you have. Yeah, of course. And, and I wanted to bring that up because I think um, 
there are a lot of people that, you know, are going to watch this that are in the design world, whether they be interior designers or, or architects that I've worked with that are clients. And I think having an understanding that they should have an understanding of, of your background too, and where you've come from and how you've consistently maintained this passion, you know, for in your, your art, you know, artistic expression. And I think that's really beautiful because a lot of people, you know, get distracted and they don't, you know, maintain that passion. Yeah. So, well, I love what I do. <laughs> it helps. Yeah, you do. It's, it's clear. And I am, I'm so happy that we're connected and that we're working on this together together. Yeah. Me um, too. Yeah. And uh, thanks to your son, Elliot, uh, for the intro, by the way. Just yeah. Thank you, Elliot, out. if you're out there. <laughs> thanks Elliot. If he's still on. <laughs> so in, in your um, statement on your site and everything, I was looking at the key influencers, George O'Keefe, Jean Art, Paul uh, Jenkins, Frankenthaler, and more. Um, Kandinsky is another. Yeah. So in talking about those, did you, um, you know, academically, did you research them uh, from, you know, from studying them as a kid? Or did you go out to the museums and actually see their work in person? So having, sure you did, but. Yeah, that's a great question because having two parents who were so into the arts, I mean, they also were art collectors and, and they, were, they were very much into writing, performing arts. I was around artists my whole life. And my, my, just, just as often as I went to recitals because they were in the music field, I had to also go to museums because my, my mom just loved to go to New York and go to the MoMA. And we would take the train in. I mean, I, 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 galleries and museums were just always a really big, huge part of my life. And mm -hmm. I, these, these painters that I'm, I say influenced me, they influenced me because I've been watching them and looking at them since I was little. And, yeah. and they made an impact on me. They truly like, I mean, I understand now that I'm older why I like who I liked and why I was influenced by those people. Well, it's beautiful that you had, you know, parents and family that really nurtured that um, and encouraged you to go down that path. I yeah. Think it's really beautiful. Um, Looking at your exhibition history, your group exhibition history, something too, um, I didn't want to embarrass you, but you know, I wanted to highlight, it, it's so impressive how many solo and group exhibitions that you've had. Starting in 1978 um, was the first you know, solo exhibition that you had. Um, so, yeah, and you'll notice a big void in there because that's when I was a designer and I didn't pick up a, I didn't pick up pick a brush a brush up for like twenty six years. So then I jumped to like you know two thousand and sixteen or fifteen or fourteen, and it's it's not I have this huge gap in there. But you know, or you also have family to raise and yeah, you know, yeah, you're busy. And and also, and in all fairness, I mean, when you're when you're a designer, you're working with the fundamentals of of the fine arts every day. And mm -hmm. at least with the kind of work that I did, I was. And so it's honestly, it was, I think it, I think it was in my favor. Personally, I think it was in my favor to stay quiet for a while and then come yeah. back and regenerate. And, and then I had all this muscle memory from what I did prior, like in Berlin. And it just came back. It's just, it's not stopping. It's just like, it's a wonderful, it, it, I mean, if you cut my wrist off, it just flows. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, no, it's beautiful. I love it. And I'm, looking at your permanent and public and corporate collections. So Deposit Guarantee Bank, Jackson, Mississippi. So was that the first? Yeah, uh, I was young. <laughs> you were young. I mean, you're, you know, I, I love it. I love that you've documented this and people can see on your site, you know, how many, you know, public, private, uh, permanent collections that you're in, the amount of exposure that you've had, the organizations that have, you know, either acquired your work or shown your work is so, so impressive. Um, so moving on to kind of talking about some of the other work, do you have any favorites? You know, I'm, you probably can't say that you do, but I'm just curious if you have any favorites that you can share with us or favorite moments of your career that you can share with us. Well, you know, I think, I think recently the thing I've been really into that I've really been enjoying is working on these really large pieces. I have some works on paper that are like nine feet tall. Okay. And I've done three of them so far, and um, they're, they're very challenging. And I mean, I actually have to stand on them to, to work on them because they're on the ground. And yeah. I can't straddle them. I have to be on them. So I have to wear like clean socks and like actually get on the paper. 
<laughs> and which, you know, is it's backbreaking, but I, I love sure. I love working that big because it's it's challenging. You know, you have to visualize how it's gonna be put on a wall. You have to the depth of perspective perspective is completely different when you're on the ground versus yeah. when you hang it. Um, sure. I've been and I'd like to continue to, to do larger work. I, I just you have to I mean you have to frame it, you have to be able to install it, and those are logistical issues now that I have to deal with. Yeah, and I want to work with you on on placing some of those larger works for some of my clients because I, I mean, I'm, I've become a big fan of your work. Oh, well, thank um, you. For those for those of you that joined later, um, we were in Nina's studio earlier about half hour ago, and the reception was not good enough, so she ran to her house, and so we're actually doing the call now at her house. But what we'll have to do, Nina, is once you're um, we fix the Wi-Fi in your studio, is do another one so people can see like the giant nine. Yeah. Room. You yeah, know, work on paper and you know hundreds of other works that you have available. Yeah, that would be great but, because my studio really is an is it in it's an indicator of also who I am. You know, it's 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 my playground and 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 I love it. And I, it's it's I mean this is my house that I just put three things behind me really quickly, <laughs> but my studio is where I live and breathe and I make I make the magic happen or not yeah. happen. <laughs> no, I and and how do you? juggle that I mean and what recommendations do you have for any artists out there that are you know trying to balance family uh, career etc do you really feel it's necessary for you to have that separation with your studio uh, outside of your home because a lot of artists maybe can't afford to have a separate studio so what would you say to, to artists that are watching well I, I'm pretty self-disciplined so if I had to work at home I I would be okay with that um, mm -hmm. I, I've always been super focused and super like, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And I'm very passionate about it. Mm -hmm. I, I would say though, that, that that's, that's kind of an, its own little art is being able to figure and juggle out how you're going to fit that into your schedule, especially when you have a family and you have jobs and you have work. And I mean, if you want to do it, you do it. I mean, you find time, you get up early in the morning, you burn midnight oil, you, you, you find an hour here or there. It's, mm -hmm. it's better to do something, I think, than nothing. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Well, you've definitely found that passion. And, you know, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, but on artstager.shop, which is a new site that I launched um, recently to really promote and curate um, artists that are under $10,000. So there's work, I feel like, for any price point. And Nina have, has, how many works do we have on there? I think you have 53 or something, 54, 53. Yeah, we have a lot of works. Um, they're starting at you know sixteen hundred dollars and uh, going up from from there. And they're different sizes, so a lot of them are twenty two by thirty. Some are larger, larger thirty eight by twenty five. Um, and they we can help with framing, etc. But they're so beautiful, and you can you know zoom in and see these works on the site as well as on Nina's site too. So. Um, what else can we talk about? We have a few more minutes. I try to keep these at like 25, 30 minutes and we're almost there. But what else did we not cover that you'd like to share? Well, I think the intuitive part of my work is probably a big important part. And okay. a, a lot of people don't work that way. A lot of people are very methodical and they do sketches and they do drawings. And, and I think it's important to realize that this work is extremely spontaneous and, and um, because that's kind of an art in itself too, is being able to work quickly and to make decisions quickly, as mm -hmm. opposed to, you know, when you paint and when you sculpt, well, especially when you paint, you can, you can paint over something. You can't paint over an ink. So, so there's, there's, I mean, just think about that. You, a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And, and you have to start light to go dark. If you go dark too fast, you really can't cover it up. I mean, especially mm -hmm. if it's a large area and it's, I mean, you, you have to be careful not to get into this mud bath of just, you know, making murky, muddy, muddy stuff. And it's so the way I work is probably is, is very much it, these to me are just souvenirs behind me. It's a, this is, it's a souvenir of the process of what I do. Mm -hmm. So the art making that I do is really what the art is about. Yeah. And I, I think that's a really good point, because if you mess up or in your mind mess up and it's not something that you intentionally want, you kind of have to start over. You can't just mud over it, right. like, like you know, a painter can do. Um, right. so, so I so I view my I view my studio um, like a like a playground. I mean, to me, it's a place. It's a private place where I can make mistakes. I, I don't even want to call them mistakes. Where I can work. I can work yeah. and I can develop what I need to develop to make powerful art. 
And so to me, when I'm working on it, it either works and it's, and it's magic and it's powerful or I'm spinning my wheels and I get on with the next one. I mean, I don't, I'm not a person to just keep digging and digging and digging and digging. Cause if it's not working, it's not working. You just I mean, shift and you just move forward. Yeah. And you let go. Yeah. You, know? you don't keep that inner, that energy. You just move on and, and keep going. I think that's a beautiful lesson. I mean, has, has that way of thinking really helped you through the pandemic and, and ha have your kind of way of thinking or process shifted at all as a result of what we've all gone through in the last year, year and a half? You know, Kipton, I have to say it really has helped me because I have, I've, I've never been a person with expectations. You know, I didn't, I didn't raise children thinking they're going to be this and that. And I wanted, I wanted them to be this or that. I mean, my whole life, I've gone through my life, even my company, my company for 26 years was based on intuition. It wasn't based on a five-year plan. Yeah. And I, I, every decision I made, whether I even wanted to bid on something was whether it was all intuitive. And I, and it's all about what happens. It's like, it's like, I let what happen hap happen, what happens happen. <laughs> and, <Yeah>. and, and, and. <laughs> And I work with I work with it as it goes. I mean, I don't I don't have any kind of preconceived idea of how my life's going to go. I love that. I really love that. And for you to nurture that with your with your children, I think that's beautiful. Thank you. Um, it's kept I mean, me. It's kept me sane. <laughs> it kept me healthy. No, absolutely. But you know, a lot of people don't think that way. Most people don't think that way. You know, and um, that's a beautiful lesson. And I appreciate you sharing that. So. With that, I am so excited we're going to do another one of these when we can get the Wi-Fi um, sorted out in your studio so that we have a really clear, beautiful connection. Cool. And then we can take people back into your studio in the next week or two, whenever it works for your schedule. That sounds great. I'd, lo I'd love to do that with you. That so. sounds great. Thank you so much for your time today. And thanks for everybody who joined. This is yes. fun. I love it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for everybody that joined. I'm going to save this. Um, it'll be on my IGTV. Nina, I'll, I'll share it so we can both share it okay. with our family and friends. And uh, see you soon, everybody. Thanks, Kipton. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. All You're right. welcome. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye for now.